Okay, so I'm watching this documentary and these ladies are um, communicating with whales. So they're out doing this research and they're out basically in the middle of nowhere. There's this beauty, this silence, this connection, this peace about it. And they're having this conversation on the documentary about, wow, they love this so much that this is now their reality. But then the other girl's like, no, 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 it's, this is not our reality. The life back home, when it gets busy and it's craziness, that's our life. And so it's like that difference of, okay, when I'm in this nature, I'm calibrating to nature. But when I go back home, I'm now calibrating to home. So how do you take this feeling, this feeling place, this frequency of this nature of who you are and where you are, and then come back home and it doesn't shock the shit out of your system and you can still thrive, even though the energy is way different. What you're describing is someone in either case out there with the whales are at home being shocked. You're describing conditional love. I'm happy with the whales because there's no confusion. Nobody's honking at me. There's nothing that I'm knee jerking about. And so I feel good. But when I get home, there's stuff, there's conditions. And so that's why we talk endlessly about being a deliberate creator and calibrating when you are with the whales or when you are meditating or when you are listening to music that is pleasing or making love or have your feet in the cool water or the warm water. In other words, doing your best to calibrate to your inner being so that you have good sea legs, good shock absorbers, good shock absorbers. Really good question and really well placed in this conversation that we're having together, isn't it? It's nice to be with someone who is tuned in, tapped in, turned on. You don't know how they got there. You don't know if they were born that way and just stayed that way. They weren't. That's not what happened. Or you don't know if they have some condition that they're newly focused upon. They're newly in love. And so even though they've often walked down that street before, that street has never swayed beneath their feet before. In other words, that feeling of being in love can often cause this person that you're interacting with to be tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and then they're in love with everything because they're so in love. And when they hold you as their object of attention, they flood it all over you. And maybe that gives you something like the whales give you. That's what the whales are giving you. They're in love all the time. In other words, they're free and they're in alignment and they are offering that alignment to you when you come to see them. But don't need whales to tune to. That's looking for love in all the wrong places. That's calibrating to a condition. That's not sustainable because when you get back home, the conditions might be different. Maybe, and we're speaking to all of you, not just our magnificent friend who has offered so many good questions on this video. Maybe you don't yet believe in unconditional love. Maybe you haven't tuned yourself there and been able to sustain it in harder times. But we know for sure that's not the case with you. We know you know what it feels like to tune because you mean to. Esther sometimes speaks not compassionately to herself, but annoyingly at herself. Esther, you know better than this, she'll say. But she also often says to herself, well, even though you felt negative emotion and even though this requires some calibration, these episodes are less frequent now. You could even call them rare. And the depth of negativity is far, far, far less. And the time spent in it is much, much less. In other words, give yourself credit for the good calibrating work that you're doing. Give yourself credit 
for the good, calibrating work that you're doing. And don't need whales. You've got your inner being. But enjoy whales. And don't need a lover. You've got your inner being. But enjoy a lover. And don't need bolstering. Because you can bolster yourself. But enjoy bolstering. Enjoy being bolstered. And enjoy bolstering. In other words, praise every chance you get. And accept compliments fully and completely. Hi, Abraham, Esther, everyone. So I'm wondering about um, something that maybe is a very long-held desire, but um, because I have beliefs or resistance around it, I don't focus on it. It's not something that I need to think about in my daily life, so um, I tend not to focus on it because when I do, I'm kind of focusing on the negative end of the stick or um, in a way that doesn't feel good. So I'm wondering, though, is that delaying stuff coming to me because I'm not focusing there and I'm not um, calibrating to what's in my vortex? Is there a way to think on these subjects like bringing more money into my life without sparking those negative beliefs? Is there a way to think about it positively and bring it to me faster? Thank you. Well, now you're talking exactly about what we were just talking about. It's about your awareness of how you're feeling and then responding to how you're feeling with things that you trust and expect to give you relief. Let's approach it simply. Let's start this anew. Let's get a fresh approach to all of this. So just relax and listen to us ramble here for a little bit. So you are the attractor of everything that comes to you. Your point of attraction is all about you. It's about what you think. It's about what you're responding to. It's about your reaction to things. It's about what you think on purpose, and it's about what you think not on purpose. But it's about your reaction to life. You knew that that would be the case when you came. You knew that you would be sifting and sorting. And a big part of your reaction is that in every case, you're launching rockets of desire. You're launching clarifications and preferences. And so... Being a reactor to life is not a bad thing. It's not a problem. In fact, it's something that you intended. You planned on it. You knew it would be part of the equation. You knew it would be how you ask. But then, once you've asked, once you've clarified, once you know that you don't like rude people and you don't want to be one, and you don't like a sick body and you don't want to have one, and you don't want to not have enough money. And you don't want to be someone who is in that experience and who is complaining about it. In other words, it doesn't take a lot of living of life. You've all lived enough life to know very well on so many topics what you prefer. And we want you to know that your vortex, your vibrational reality, has received all of those vibrational requests and that your inner being tends them focuses upon them. Now, your inner being is part of your point of attraction because your inner being and you, you are an extension of your inner being. So when you give new feedback to your inner being about what you've decided from living life that you prefer, your inner being takes your notes and holds that newfound place for you. And is a point of attraction for those requests. So there is a current of things wanted. Cooperative components are being gathered into that vibrational reality. And you know what? You are often the only missing piece of the cooperative components that have been gathered. Because your inner being stays fresh and new. Your inner being doesn't stand in a place of justifying why you want that. Your inner being just focuses upon the desire. But when you 
Focus upon why you want it, justifying your experience, defending it, proclaiming the unfairness of it not coming to you. Then you are a holdout. You hold yourself unwittingly. You don't do it on purpose. You don't do it deliberately. You do it by default. But you hold yourself vibrationally, not calibrated to your own desire. But your inner being is calibrated so completely to all of your desires. It's what we meant earlier when we say that's what's newly going to come to you, a convergence. You're going to start letting so many things in all at once that your passion is going to be evident to you. Your inner being stands there with all that you want and stands as the active vibrational point of attraction for the gathering of those cooperative components. And you, it's important that you know that you have to decide whether to be a cooperative or an uncooperative component to what you are being drawn to, what you're being called to, because your inner being is never going to stop focusing and the law of attraction is never going to stop answering and you are never going to stop being called. And if you've got negative emotion, it's you that's causing the split energy by your stubborn willingness to put up with thoughts that don't feel good. So this continuum that we talk about, every day you have new experiences and every day you launch new rockets and every day If you are a student of these principles that we talk about, you have opportunities to improve your relationship with this calling of you. There does not need to be a tug of war. It can be as simple as, oh, yeah, I would prefer that just like a buffet line, a food buffet. Please put that on my plate and I'm going to take it over to the table and I'm going to sit and I'm going to enjoy it. Everything can be like that. If you can just let go of these tendencies to explain and justify and rationalize and defend. If you could just shine this attitude of compassion on yourself as your inner being does. Aware that you're not where you want to be. But not blaming or judging. Aware of where you are in relationship to where you want to be with the attention upon where you want to be. This was a good conversation.